Over 50% of all runners struggle with at least one injury per year. But it doesn't have to be like this. I'm going to take a wild guess that you watching this have some experience with running related injuries. And then you know, just like me, how frustrating it is not being able to do what we all runners love to do, to run. <laughs> As a coach and physio, I see most runners focusing on the wrong things when it comes to avoiding running injuries. I myself went from being constantly injured to running extreme ultra marathons and running every single day for four years. And that is because I started focusing on the one thing that really matters to stay injury free. To explain this, I'm going to show you a pyramid. The bigger part of the pyramid, the more important and bigger difference it makes when it comes to injury prevention. So at the top here, this small part is something you really shouldn't put your main effort in to stay injury free. But both as a running coach and physiotherapist, I have so often seen people putting the main focus on these things, which is so frustrating because if you put the same effort, time and resources into this bigger part of the pyramid, I really believe that many running injuries could be prevented. Okay, so what are these things that you shouldn't focus uh, too much on? First of all, it is luck slash genetics. When it comes to genetics, this actually can of course play a big role when it comes to how prone you are to different types of running related injuries. But the simple reason why you shouldn't put your focus on this is because you can't do anything about it. If you just say to yourself that you are unlucky and feel sorry for yourself, uh, you will not start looking at the things you can actually control and change to make you less prone to injuries. I myself was in this camp for way too long, being frustrated, seeing some of my training buddies doing the same training as me without struggling as much with injuries as I did. But as soon as I stopped with that kind of comparison and instead started looking inwards or what I can control and what I can change, it made a huge uh, difference. The second thing you shouldn't focus all your time, money and efforts into is uh, quackery and different weird treatments. And the sad thing about this, being a health professional myself, is that many different therapists focus so much on different passive treatments that they make the runner believe they have to do to stay injury free with no real scientific evidence really backing it up whatsoever. Which is great for the business of the people doing it, but of course terrible for the runners who are kept away from focusing on the things that actually would make a real difference. The next thing is different tapes and uh, braces, which can play an important role. For example, if you really easily roll your ankles when you're out running on trails, taping your ankles can really help prevent that. But many people focus way too much on different things and uh, gadgets that most of the time have no evidence they actually help. The next one is a bit the same. It is about flexibility. And if you Google how to stay injury free, there are so many that just blindly advise you to stretch. But still there is no evidence supporting that general stretching and being more flexible actually makes you less prone to running injuries. On the opposite, being stiff in some tendons and joints is a natural adaptation to running training and makes you a more efficient runner and less prone to injuries. But with that being said, for some runners it can of course be good with some mobility work. And if you have specific problems, mobility training can play an important role in reducing your injury risk. So these four things should not be your main focus to stay injury free. But as I said, I still see most people putting their main effort on these things. Let's instead move directly to talking about the biggest part of this pyramid, the thing that actually makes a huge difference for injury prevention and also development over time as a runner. The number one thing you should focus on to run injury free is load management. Simple meaning not doing too much too soon. 
And this is easier said than done. Although most runners know the importance of having a sensible progression, it's the main mistake all of us do. And some, like me, have done it way too many times. To do this right, you have to prioritize some time and effort to plan out your training and also monitor it. And you can't just focus on how much and how long you run each week, because how hard these runs are also weigh in on your overall load and the toll your muscles tendons and bones uh, have to deal with. And that's why I'm very happy to present uh, Coros as the sponsor of this video. Because Coros don't only make these great running watches, they also provide software in their training hub that can help you monitor that you don't do too much uh, too soon. So let me show you something very interesting. If I dive into my Coros training hub here and check the Evolabs uh, metrics, there is this feature called Load Impact. And it is basically a value of the impact brought to your body from short term training. And it is calculated based on the training load in the last 7 days. And if we have a look here at my entire training year last year, we see high peaks here and here. And after both of these high peaks, I got uh, injured. This first one was when I ran a 100km ultramarathon. And running ultramarathons like that, of course your training load will become really high. And it is for sure a calculated risk I took, so I wasn't surprised that I got an injury from it. But this second peak was different, because this was simply me doing the mistake of ramping up training too fast when I was training for an upcoming race. And this high peak caused a foot injury that took a long time to get better. So in retrospect I should have planned better and paid more attention to these values. So thanks Chorus for creating these really valuable tools for us runners and supporting my channel. You will get access to all of that kind of data from your own training if you use any Coros watch. Okay, so besides looking at data like that, as mentioned, a really important thing to focus on to manage your training load is actually put some time and effort into planning out your training. And there are no black and white answers on how much you can progress your training over time. Since all of us are different and have different backgrounds, so part of your journey as a runner is getting to know your own body and know how much it can uh, tolerate. But a good way to think when you're planning out your runs is that it is much better to do it like this, spreading out your runs, doing short runs more often than doing one extreme long and tough uh, session. Let's move up again on the pyramid and look at these two things. Because although training load is the most important thing and should be your main focus, these two things also really make a difference when it comes to you staying injury free as a runner. Strength training is often talked about and focused a lot on when it comes to injury prevention for runners. But when looking at the science literature, there has actually not been that convincing evidence when it comes to if it actually make runners less prone to injuries. But last year this good study came out that was actually done by an old classmate of mine, Pia Desai. She and her team did a study on strength training to prevent injury, including 433 runners and splitting them into two groups. One control group with no added strength routine and one intervention group that did a strength and foam rolling routine twice a week during an 18 week period. And when looking at those in the intervention group that actually followed through and did these exercises, they had an 85% lower risk of sustaining running related injuries. So these are huge findings and actually provide some good evidence that strength training makes a difference when it comes to injury prevention. Now let's talk about the last piece of this uh, pyramid that also is so important not to forget. This part is uh, sleep, food and general recovery. Because of course what you do all of those other hours of the day that you're not training will play a huge role in how your body is able to handle the stress 
that the training puts on your body. This uh, study looked at athletes who slept on average less than 8 hours per night and found that they were 1.7 times more likely to have an injury compared with athletes who slept more than 8 hours. So in order to stay injury free of course it is important to make healthy choices and prioritizing sleep and eating enough uh, food. All uh, chorus watchers also do sleep tracking and give you daily stress scores to help you make good choices in your recovery as well. So thanks again to Chorus for creating these great tools for us runners. If you want to check out uh, their running watches, there's a link in the description. Train smart, have fun and I will see you in the next video. Bye.